Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a shoe mockup in Photoshop. Now as you can see here is my Instagram, uh, I've been using this uh, Mercurial Superfly mockup to create various concepts and ideas. I also have a Hypervenom one here that I created and uh, I've been posting these on my Instagram which you guys should check out by the way link will be in the description um, but it's really easy to create one of these mock-ups and kind of customize your own shoes obviously there's things like Nike ID but they're only so limited to color and things like that and also you can do this for any shoe you want obviously I'm a big soccer fan so I've been doing a bunch of soccer related things and that's basically what my whole Instagram is dedicated to but you can do this with any shoe uh, of any kind and kind of get a really nice looking result. So let's hop into the tutorial and get started. The first thing you want to do is find an original image of the shoe you want to do. And I recommend finding uh, a very high quality image. So I'm going to do the Superfly. So I'm just going to type in Mercurial, Mercurial Superfly 5. I'm going to go to images and you can type in any shoe you want. Then you want to click tools on Google, go to size larger than 1600 by 1200. And now you should get a pretty high quality picture of your shoe. Uh, if your shoe's relatively new, uh, you might not find a good quality image, but you can see here like Nike has a pretty high quality image of all their stuff. Um, here's the new black one. Um, and if you have a lot of options, you want to find a uh, shoe or whatever you're doing in like a medium color range. So you don't want a black, you don't want a white, you kind of want something in between. Um, or that's how I personally prefer. So something like this green boot here would work perfectly. And that's kind of what I have an example of right here um, in Photoshop. So once you find that picture, you want to just drag it into Photoshop. And this is like 1500 by 1500, which is like a pretty good size for this. Um, pretty high quality and will work quite well. Now, I have this uh, template for the Superfly as well as this one. And I'm going to put a download link to both of these in the description for you guys to use and customize to kind of see how I set mine up. Um, by the way, I have, I have two other versions of two different angles and then I also have Hypervenoms. Um, on my Patreon page, if anyone's interested in that, it's right here. You can check that out and get that stuff there. But anyway, you can download this, check it out, see how I set everything up. But it's pretty simple. So the first thing here is um, you want to have a pretty solid background. That's another key thing you want to do when you're picking out your image. So solid white background, I'm just going to double click, unlock that. And then I'm going to duplicate this, Command J, and get the magic wand tool and just click in the white. Now you can pen tool it or you can do whatever, but the magic wand tool is pretty quick when you have a solid background and it works pretty great. So I'm just going to select that and press delete, hide that background one. And then let's get rid of the shadow and the bits in between the spikes. Um, something like this so you don't want this is why I go for medium color because if you have a black it will um, like if you have black background and black on your boots it will like select that Nike sign or if this was white it would select the Nike sign when you select your background which is annoying uh, which makes you have to pin tool it but the magic wand tool works pretty dang good um, for this so you can see right here, this is being selected. I don't want that selected. I also don't want that selected. So I'm going to have to kind of lasso that out um, like so. And that's pretty good. Let's press delete. And now let's clean this up. So let's get rid of this. That's pretty good. And any other spots you just want to sort of use the pen tool, go around, select everything and delete it. But you can see this is pretty good and I got everything where I like it. 
Now what I like to do is name this layer OG or original or whatever you want and then duplicate it, hide that original one, press command U and you'll get this hue and saturation pop up and bring the saturation down to zero. So now we're just working in gray and I think this is the best because this is what we're going to be using later on anyway. So this is what I just use to copy each individual part. But um, when I'm pen tooling, I like to use this. So um, you might be confused on what I'm talking about there, but um, I use the pen tool here and select each individual section of the shoe and cut it out, just copy and paste it. But I copy and paste this layer and use this layer to trace. So if you don't know what I mean, say I wanna get this heel part cut out so I can edit that individual color. I'd wanna come up here and start here and kind of come around and I'm gonna do this real quick alright so I pen tooled that got my heel and I want to go up here to selection press click that and then zero feather radius click OK and then I want to go to the gray layer select that press command C press delete and then command V so it will copy that layer and then paste it onto a new layer. And what I want to do is just line this back up where it originally was. And if you, uh, you want to make sure it's aligned by just checking it. And you shouldn't see anything move. The only thing that should be changing is the color. And that's pretty good. And then we just name that heel. Now, you'll notice if I uncheck that and uncheck the original layer, this gray layer is missing the heel. And you just kind of go through and um, pen tool any individual part you want that you want to edit later on. And then um, I'm just going to skip forward on that because I don't want to do, do that to this whole um, shoe right now. It takes a lot of time. It's a very time consuming process. But you want to do that. And once you have each individual part on a new layer, you want to go to the next step, which I'll show you now. All right, so now I have each individual part cut out. And actually, this is my original template that I used. And you remember how I said I used a medium color, not a white or a black? Well, I used a white or a black on this one. Um, but I did some different changes that made it kind of work. But it's easier to use a color like I said before. But so we have each individual part here and we just want to modify these um, to create the shadowing and stuff but we need to make in each individual color first so I went down here to the yin yang half circle thing and you just want to get a solid color or whatever you want really you could just use a square that covers everything up sort of like I did here let me just click OK there. Uh, if you look here, you can see I use just individual squares on each part, individual shapes rather. Uh, but a color fill works too. So I'm going to create a color fill and then I have one, two, three, four, five. Actually, don't need that. Six, seven uh, parts of the shoe. So I need seven colors. So let's duplicate that two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And then what you want to do is press command and click the thumbnail of each indiv individual part go down to the um, uh, layer mask and just command enter and rather we need black on that so just command enter and then command deselect or command D and then command I to inverse it so now this color is only on the that certain part of the shoe so let's just go down through and do that for each one. Once you do that, you want to just go ahead and rename all these layers to the same thing that um, they are above. Um, so mine is just in order, so I just have to rename in order as the same part and go through like so. Alright, once you do that, you want to put each of these into its own group. So this will be the edit group. 
that's where you edit the colors and things and then this will be the effects because this is where the effects will be so we want to open up the effects and we want to start editing each uh, of these so we're gonna select all of them set that to a multiply you can see our color starts to show through and then we want to hit command J to duplicate everything and select all those and put those all to screen so the screen part will be the lighting and then the multiply part will be the shadows so you want to edit these together and try to get a realistic lighting for the color and you might want to uh, originally select a uh, a color that might look good for most things so I think I usually use red because when you change it it looks pretty good for all the colors so if I just double click here you just move it up to red and maybe like mid-range here is a good idea so everything's red and now let's go ahead and edit some of this stuff so I'm gonna start on the bottom here and you can see the bottom was originally black so it's gonna have to be um, a lot more of the lighting than the shadow and this is why I say you should use a mid-tone color like the green I did originally because it'd be pretty even and you can just kind of slightly adjust each one when you have black and white you have to adjust one to the extreme measure and then you might have to edit more things um, later on depending on the color you choose um, but so for this bottom I'm gonna go to the multiply layer and bring down the opacity quite a bit maybe not that far maybe like 40 and then let's go to the screen mode and drop that down a bit 75 so that's a pretty decent red try to get it as bright as you possibly can but I think that one's all right and this is a lot of just tinkering with stuff so I'll probably come back and adjust that let's go to the spikes though now uh, maybe bring them down that's yeah, too much let's go like 50 and maybe like 30 here that's not too bad and then the main this is important you can see this one's a lot lighter so uh, because it was white so let's go to the main screen and bump that down first Maybe 20 works and then yeah, the multiply should stay up fairly high maybe 90 and yeah the screen's gonna have to go down a lot that's okay about 10% oh thin is exactly the same it's a lot of screen so let's bump that down to maybe 10% again heal going to be the same deal I'm a wrapper um, laces again white let's bump that down a lot all right and then the black um, uh, ankle is, is actually really difficult to work with the, the black actually looks kind of ugly you definitely want a colored ankle so you can adjust the color easier because you'll notice if I decrease the black it just eh, it doesn't look as good but something like that is all right um, this isn't bad um, also one thing that I did do is if the shadows weren't strong enough or something um, I would go to say let's say the main wasn't strong enough I would select the main layer go to levels alt click to make it a clipping mask and then drag these in to kind of make the shadow stronger and more visible something like that and I think that looks pretty good and yeah so that's basically the whole customized shoe there um, color wise so we can adjust the color of anything now and it will look pretty good obviously I could have tinkered with some of the stuff a little more to make it look a little better and by the way um, I forgot to do the swoosh here so um, I don't know what happened to that, but we're just going to be missing out on this, on that for for now. Um, but once you get uh, the this part done, then you want to go to add your designs. So what you want to do is go to your main layer that takes up a bulk of like the main part of your shoe where a design would be, and you can do this to any part of the shoe where there would be a design. 
but you want to create a new layer and clipping mask it go to the rectangle tool just get an outline of it and just hit enter to fill and then command D to deselect so this layer is blue right now but let's command T to transform and just line it up with our shoe so it goes to a little past the front we want to give give a little space and just past the end and then just above and then just below so this is where the design will be everything that you see is blue is where the design will be so we want to click enter there and then we want to right click and convert to smart object now um, you'll notice a little thing that here in the thumbnail if you double click that it'll take you to a new window where you can put a design down so I'm gonna create a new layer and delete that because we don't want a solid color um, and let me just get a brush and I'm just gonna grab this paintbrush kind of looking thing real fast and just like say this is a design so I do that I click or I press save command s I go back and you can see our design is now there now that's really easy you just add your design there and customize it it's a lot easier than adding a design clipping mask it and lining it up but one thing you might notice is depending on the shoe it might not fit well so one thing you can do is go to edit um, perspective warp free transform or puppet warp all of these will work to kind of make your um, design fit better so for example if you click puppet warp oh actually we need a solid color before we do that all right so there's a solid color let's go puppet warp so you can ha see you have all this mesh and stuff which can be kind of annoying um, but you can just kind of click in each corner and then click in some main spots so here's a main spot this will be a main spot um, the bottom here bottom here bottom here I didn't get this corner cool and then you can kind of click these points and adjust to get things to fit now I personally think the pup puppet warps a little odd so I'm just gonna hit cancel on that but depending on the shoe that might work but what I did was just went to free transform actually no not free transform what am I talking about I want to edit transform warp and this one you can kind of get a better more realistic look so you just have to bring like maybe that one down this guy down this guy down actually okay. bring that one down and then that down do something like that boom you kind of line it up just adjust it for a warp or anything like that that's pretty good I need to bring that back though but you can make those slight adjustments to make it fit your shoe now you don't have to do this for every one it's just depending on the angle or um, the shape of the shoe you might have to do that slightly you probably don't have to do it as much as I just did you just probably have to do a light adjustment and you can make it look pretty nice now when you're done with everything I recommend creating a new layer and I'm just gonna fill this with a white background and then you can create a new layer go to the brush tool get a soft brush create a new layer have black selected and we're gonna just create a small shadow so let me just click there with a soft brush and you want to command T to transform stretch that out bring it in move it to where you'd want it to be so maybe there and just decrease the opacity like so and there you go you got your shadow and you got a fully customizable shoe that you can add designs to or do whatever you want with and you can just uncheck whether you don't want the design or whatever and yeah guys that's basically this tutorial hopefully you learned something um, if you did please drop a like on the video I would really appreciate it be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this um, in a wide variety of programs um, check out my Instagram follow that and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.